by the Hilton Inn of Greenville, by Pepsi, by Morgan Printers Incorporated, by Pizza Hut, by Wachovia, and by SK Famous Brands. Now, here's the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the Steve Logan Show. After a game like this, you almost go, well, where do you start? The Pirates win it by the final score of 56-42. It just shows that you never know what's going to happen in a football game. Most people expected a defensive struggle, and you look up on the scoreboard, 98 points. Pirates score 56 points against the South Carolina defense, only giving up 11 points per ball game. And Steve, uh, I don't know how many plays we're going to be able to show in this game today, but uh, there were so many big plays, and your guys just came through after the big lead and still hung on and won at the end. Jeff, the best thing we did was answer. Uh, you know, they score and we'd come back and answer and continue to do so, and that was necessary to win the football game. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, it's, it, I've got, it took the edge off of it for me. You know, Willie Brookins got hurt, uh, and he's not going to be back for two or three, maybe the season. Uh, he hurt his knee. We've lost Walter Scott. Walter may be back, but uh, that, what you saw is Tannehill standing in the pocket all day long, and those are two premier pass rushers. And so there's a definite edge off of this thing for me. I mean, I'm tickled to death to win a football game, but doggone it, we can't lose our kids like this and, and continue to produce. And so uh, we're going to have to call on some kids in our program to step up and really play above their heads because they don't have Walter and, and Willie's talent. So they're going to have to come on and go, and, and uh, it's going to be real interesting to see how we respond. It was amazing watching Marcus Crandall. Of course, this is really the seventh game that Marcus has played as the Pirate quarterback. And, Steve, there were times it was almost scary the way he was running the offense. Well, uh, you know, Mark has continued to progress, and, and I'm, not, I'm not ready to, you know, say that he's the best that, that he can be yet. I think he can improve. There's a lot of things that he can improve, little things uh, that defenses are doing. He needs to... Uh, study a little more film and see some of the things that the defensive coordinators are preparing for him and be able to respond to it intuitively rather than things that I've coached him. So uh, he, he is coming on. Believe me, I wouldn't trade the guy for anybody in the world. There's a bunch of our kids on our team I feel that way about. But Mark is having a, he's gotten himself off to a good start, and, and uh, I'm tickled to death for him. Well, it was a shootout at the OK Corral, and the Pirates had the better of it in the first half. Let's now go to those first half highlights. A homecoming crowd of 70,000 plus in Columbia. We pick up the action. There's the Pirates with a little trick play here, Coach, in your first possession, and you hit Richards for a first down. Well, we saw on their punt safe they weren't covering our up backs on the film, so we went ahead and went with the fake punt. It was a good gamble, and it was going to pay off for us. We get a tip pass there. Mark had two passes tipped that were intercepted, and uh, he came away with three interceptions, but really, you know, he wasn't throwing the ball that badly at all. We got Junior Smith cut loose in the running game this week. Finally, I want to compliment our offensive line. Coach Jagosinski did a good job of, uh, you know, getting Junior the, the running room that he needed. That was the only pass that we threw that, that Marcus threw that was really uh, ill-advised, I should say. And, and uh, he comes back and regains his composure and gets us down the field in a hurry here. Well, the important part is South Carolina not able to capitalize, and now the Pirates get the ball back offensively, and we see a Fine run by Junior Smith, who just had a terrific day for you. Well, you know, here again, Junior can't run without someone blocking, and our offensive line did a fine job of blocking. I'll tell you one thing our defense did do. Uh, we did shut down their running game, and uh, it, it was, you know, that was critical to us. At least we got them in a situation where they had to throw it every time. There's the fade route to Larry Shannon. He's starting to become proficient at that, and Marcus is getting a good feel for that throw. That was a great catch in the end zone. Pirates get the ball right back on a turnover, and there is Mitch Galloway scoring on a 45-yard touchdown strike. And the Pirates already have three on the board. They lead it 21 to nothing. Well, Mitch is, it was Mitch's birthday, and uh, we made him captain. He's from South Carolina, and he really uh, had an outstanding day, and I'm tickled to death for him. Morris Foreman gets a good run back there, gets us in good field position. Mark gets the ball up on a wheel route. Scott Richards gets us down into scoring position again. And uh, we line up with a little bit of a trick play here of sorts, and Mark dumps it off to Mitch for another touchdown. And the Pirates are well on their way in the second period, leading 27-0. And now we see, finally, South Carolina beginning to get on track. There's Kobe Ta Toby Cates making the catch, and there's Pritchett taking it up the middle for the touchdown for South Carolina. The Pirates come right back now offensively, and this is a big play down the sideline. It was a big play because we were coming out of the hole there. We needed to get our offense out of the out of the hole so we didn't have to punt coming out of our end zone. Uh, we didn't convert on that particular drive. South Carolina comes right back and 
uh, you know, their offense is, is doing well, and, and we just, we never could generate a pass rush. We lost Willie Brookins early in the game to a knee injury, and we were playing without Walter Scott, our two best pass rushers out of the game, and it really took a toll on our second, secondary because no one was getting any pressure. That was Frederick made a nice move, took it into the end zone, made it a 27 to 14 ball game at halftime with the Pirates on top. As you just saw, the Pirates jumped to the 27 to nothing lead. Then South Carolina came back and answered with a couple of touchdowns in the second quarter. 27 to 14 is our score. And Steve, were you at all surprised at so many offensive fireworks in that first half? I wasn't surprised by what we were uh, capable of doing and were doing. Uh, we, I felt like Coach Barry had put together a good game plan. He was calling a beautiful game. Mark was checking well at the line of scrimmage. We were not intimidated by their defensive personnel. They were good, but we've seen better. Syracuse had better. Uh, we thought that we could pick on them with a few things, and that turned out to be the case. Uh, the thing that, you know, our, our special teams let us down, that's what let them back in the game. Had we kicked off when we went ahead 27 nothing, had we kicked off and gone down there and tackled the guy on the 20 like we're supposed to, uh, I think that we'd have got a three and out by our defense, and we could have continued to put the kill on them. But uh, we let the guy down, he gets a 50-yard return, three plays are in the end zone. So, and that the, the, is a jailhouse break from there, and it, the things got out of hand. So. Uh, believe me, I'm tickled to win it, but we've got to get things right again, go back and coach special teams and get our defense ready to go again. A lot of offense in the first half, and it just continued on into the second half. We'll be back with those second half highlights right after this timeout. Well, you might think as we start the second half, the Pirates have a comfortable lead. It's 27 to 14, but Steve, I know at halftime you had to have some concerns because South Carolina had some momentum in that second period. They did. Fi they finished the first half with all the momentum. Uh, I believe we were ahead 27 to nothing with nine minutes to go mm -hmm. in the first half, and, and really we didn't do anything from then on. So I saw the thing beginning to turn. I was concerned. I told our players that, that we have got to go answer offensively, and I was just pleading and begging with the defense to to buckle up and get down and get after it. And uh, our kids played hard, but uh, again, I'm speaking to the injuries. We, we're not the same football team without Walter Scott and Willie Brookins, and I, I would like to say we are, but we're not. And it showed up, and that kid stood back there all day long, and it's not, a, it's not the secondary. You know, people say, well, now your secondary's playing too soft. Let me tell you something, when a kid holds the ball four, five, six seconds, the secondary has to soften up to keep everything in front of them, and then it's, uh, things get out of hand. But uh, I'm proud that our kids continued to you know, just find a way to win. That's the best thing I can say for what happened today. We found a way. It wasn't very pretty, but we found a way to win. Big plays on offense, big plays on defense. Let's now roll those second half highlights. We've got a game on our hands in Columbia. Home is checking on what a great crowd on homecoming at South Carolina. Pirates come out in the second half with the football. Marcus Crandall throws it to Galloway. Ball pops up in the air and coach a big break here for the Gamecocks. Well, it, it is a big break because the ball came uh, off of Mitch's knee and right up into the guy's hands, and he returns it for a touchdown. We're going to return the favor here later on, though. Once again, you see Junior Smith getting us uh, in good field position. Here again, we've got exactly what we designed during the week. We put three eligibles on one side of the field on a field goal attempt and uh, checked the play at the line of scrimmage and got a touchdown pass out of it. Uh, I think uh, Matt Levine was two for two for the day. Delton Cotton came up with a big sack. He played well for the Pirates. And we see South Carolina now coming back offensively. Pritchett now to Brandon Bennett, and he goes over the top, and the fireworks just continue here, Coach, in this third quarter. Well, it was just a situation of them scoring and us, you know, finding a way to answer. And there's Mitch again on the option route, uh, coming through with a big catch, and finally there's the break that we needed. Uh, the kid from South Carolina knocks the ball up. Emmanuel McDaniel shows good hands and makes the catch, and he's in the end zone, and that's really the play that, that prevented us from losing the football game right there. You know, we didn't play very well on defense, but really that one defensive play right there meant the world to us. 46-yard return for Emmanuel McDaniel. Now South Carolina coming right back late in the third quarter. Tanny Hill's beginning to get some time, and Coach, he's finding some open receivers. Well, it, it really it kind of got ridiculous on both sides of the ball uh, late in the game. But again, I was just proud of our offense for answering each time that we were threatened. We came back out and answered. We didn't go into a shell. We played very aggressively all afternoon long. This was one of the prettiest passes Mark threw all day long. That was a beautiful wheel route by Mitch. Mark hit him right on the numbers, and you can see Mitch. I think Mitch bench presses about 20 or 30 pounds, and he fights this kid off here and backpedals in the end zone, and 
gets himself his third touchdown of the day. What a great day playing in his home state from Bennettsville, South Carolina. He'll always remember this ball game. South Carolina coming right back here late in the ball game. But Tannehill's down by two touchdowns here as he continues to throw the football and Gamecocks put another one on the board. Well, you can see it right there. Jeff Kidd stood there all night long. And, you know, when you do that, you're going to have your no, no secondary can hold up. This is a great call by Coach Barry right here. We had a third down and 15. They were going to get another shot at the end zone on this thing. We called the reverse. They had a blitz on and man coverage. And uh, it, it just it took them totally out of their scheme. And you can see Junior motoring into the end zone, and that really kind of put it away right there. What a cut at the 10-yard line. Took it into the end zone untouched. And now we see the Pirates with a couple of big sacks on Tannehill. Big John Krejcik was there and got the first one. And the Pirates getting a little more pressure on Tannehill again, coming up with another sack. And that was a good way to end it as the Pirates come up with the victory on the road in Columbia. Junior Smith had 192 yards rushing, and as you just saw, what a great, great run to put the ball game away, and Junior had another tremendous game, Steve. We've kind of been waiting for him this year to break out and have this type of game, and he had it against South Carolina. Well, Jeff, I'll tell you the other thing, though. We have, I have really been brutal on our offensive line this week. There's no excuse for some of the ways. Uh, we, we haven't been finishing our blocks up front, and uh, it, I really challenge those kids that we've got one of the best backs in the country, and if you give him a crack, he'll, win, he'll help you win a football game. And I think that without looking at the film, I think probably they must have responded. We've been protecting the passer pretty well all year, but uh, we have got to run block better. And, uh, you know, I, I think probably that's what happened. So uh, it's to Junior's credit, but I, I think probably somebody may have been blocking in there too for the first time this year. What a shootout and what a win for the Pirates. When we come back, our Brian Bailey will go inside the locker room and talk to those happy ECU players right after this timeout. For the Pirates, there are an awful lot of stars, both offensively and even defensively. Let's go inside the locker room now, and our Brian Bailey has an up-close and personal look at some of the guys who made it happen in the Pirate win. Brian? Thanks, Jeff. Here with the birthday boy, Mitchell Galloway, and uh, what a way to celebrate a birthday, a big win over South Carolina. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, we felt like we had a good game plan, and uh, we just come in here, try to execute the best way, and uh, we just come out on the better end of it. Put a lot of points on the board in the first quarter. And uh, we just came up, our receivers made big catches in the game, and that's what helped us out a lot. Matt, two for two through the air, a touchdown pass. Did you come to East Carolina to throw touchdown passes? No, just to punt the ball, but they knew that I played quarterback in high school and utilized what little talent I had at that, and thank God it worked out and helped the team to victory. Talk about the touchdown pass. Well, we had practiced it all week to the short side of the field. They had three defenders out there, and we had a flag by Scott, and then the two wingbacks were going to run outs, and the three defenders all went out with the two outs, and Scott was just wide open in the back of the end zone and just had to lob it up there and wait for him to catch it. He has a good arm. I'll tell you what, he came through when we needed him. And I mean, we practiced it all week, and we put that, uh, those plays in, especially for these, these guys. They were kind of relaxing on their special teams, and we thought we could take advantage of that. And I think Matt, you know, I, I guess I, I'm sure people were worried about it, but uh, he came through. He really played. You know, he threw, he threw a great pass, and I mean, it's all you can expect from him. He did a good job tonight. In this day of big plays, perhaps the biggest, the clincher, the fake reverse, and you go for a touchdown. Talk about that play. Well, what was going through my whole mind, you know, it was late in the game. It was third down alone. And all that kept flashing in my mind was the Kentucky game from last year. You know, at home, sometimes I sit down and watch, you know, where I fumbled. And I kind of hurt the team last year where they went down and kicked the field goal after I fumbled. So first and most important, I wanted to check out ball security. And as I ran down the field, and I seen the first down. I looked twice, and I seen I could make the touchdown. I just ran hard, and the offensive line gave me some good blocks and some re receivers downfield gave some good blocks, and I came out to make a big play. The real unsung heroes in this program are the student managers who assist Mike Singfield with the equipment at ECU. And our Todd Gibson had a chance to take an up-close and personal look at some real quality young guys. Todd? Mike Singfield has a saying he carries with him at all times. Prior planning prevents poor performance. Singfield is the director of athletic equipment at East Carolina, and if you knew what his job entailed, you'd realize why he carries that motto. Singfield and his 11 student managers put in some long hours, whether it be washing, fixing, or maintaining. I've stayed overnight 
my first year doing laundry, just getting game uniforms back to being white and purple again in, in the way they're supposed to be. You know, I'm over there right now, I'm sewing names on the backs of jerseys, you know, guys are working on helmets. It's, you know, anything else comes up. Coach wants a sign in the locker room, comes to me, you know. We want things done, it's, it's I'm kind of like a go-to guy. I'm not always the person that gets it done, but everybody seems to come to me or my staff to, to get it in the right direction. Singfield learned his trade from the best. LSU equipment manager Jeff Boss is known nationwide. That's where the 25-year-old LaPlace, Louisiana native got his start. It's where his love for the game began to blossom. To me, the, the, one of the greatest things in the world is college football. And, you know, I talk to some players sometimes, my eligibility never runs out. You know, I've been in college football now, this is my 10th season. And it's just a lot of fun, you know, winning and losing and being around the guys and watching people grow. And I just keep coming back for senior year, and, and it's great. I really love it. His love for the game can be seen in his work. Three years ago, Sinkfield became the youngest director of athletic equipment in the nation. Like a head coach hired to turn around a program, Sinkfield was given complete command at ECU. I did. I, I was really lucky. I was able to walk in and do what I wanted to. And nobody, uh, I was given an awful lot of confidence by the people above me, the administration and the coaches. Just say, here, take it and do it the way you feel it's supposed to be done. I mean, it's, it's uh, rewarding to me to see how far we've come, not just in this area, but the, the entire program in the last three years. Prior planning prevents poor performance. Mike Sinkfield lives by that saying, maybe the rest of us should too. Reporting for the Steve Logan Show, I'm Todd Gibson. Our sprint student of the game is senior swimming performer Elizabeth Sun, a native of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Elizabeth carries a 3.53 GPA majoring in accounting. We're pleased to salute Elizabeth Sugg, this week's Sprint Student of the Game. Welcome back to the Steve Logan Show. For 43 years, the gentleman on my left has served with distinction as the voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks, Bob Fulton. And Bob, uh, you're somebody I've always admired and looked up to as a fellow broadcaster, and now that you're retiring, we just wanted to take the opportunity to congratulate you on a great, great career. Well, thank you, uh, thank you Jeff. You're very kind, and uh, I've always respected you. I think you're one of the best in the business, and I've said this before talking to you. I think the people up your part of the country over in eastern uh, North Carolina are very fortunate to have you, and uh, I know they hope you stay there a long time, and I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed uh, having a friendship, and maybe sometime I could sneak up there to Fickman Stadium and see you play. You're always welcome. I didn't want to talk about me. I wanted to talk about you. And, Bob, we have something special here for you. Oh. From the Pirate, it says, Congratulations, Bob Fulton, voice of the Gamecocks on 43 outstanding years from East Carolina University. Well, and that's very nice, Jeff. I really appreciate that. I'm a little bit hoarse. It was that kind of a game. and I'm Oh, boy, I'll tell you. But this is, uh, this is very nice, and I'll tell you, I'll put this up in the den. And... Uh, uh, I don't know if I'll put the score of the ball game on there, but uh, I'll treasure this for a long time. Thanks a lot. It's very kind. One of the real giants in our business, Bob Fulton, retiring after this year as the voice of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Well, it's the Pirates and the Hokies. That's all you have to say. It's one of the great regional football battles. And our Todd Gibson had a chance to take a look at this week's scattering report. Todd? Thanks, Jeff. East Carolina returns home this weekend facing rival Virginia Tech. The Hokies have been ranked in the top 25 all season long. And join us with a scouting report on the Hokies is defensive line coach Cliff Yoshida. And Cliff, I guess when you look at uh, Virginia Tech, their offense uh, goes by how well their quarterback does, uh, Maurice DeShazo. Well, he's a great he's a great one. He really is. And, and last year, I think they, close, they averaged close to 450 yards a ball game, plus I think 33, 34 points a game. So it's going to be a real test for us. And uh, they've got some great skilled people. He's kind of been struggling a little bit this, uh, this season, though. Well, they've got new offensive coordinators. As a matter of fact, he's an old friend of mine, Gary Tranquil. And, and once Gary uh, gets them untracked a little bit, they're really going to be dangerous. I think they've improved. Now, you've coached at Virginia Tech a couple years ago, and you know that uh, just like Southern Miss uh, on defense, they'll be uh, firing out, they'll be blitzing the whole night. Well, they've got, uh, they, they believe in pressure up there, and, and, and they're going to present that eight-man front and come after just about every play, and they're going to move around. So it's going to present our offense some problems, but hopefully uh, uh, we'll get our offense uh, going too. Okay, Coach, good luck on uh, Saturday. East Carolina versus Virginia Tech, 1.30 kickoff time at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. Well, there's no rest for the weary. Virginia Tech comes to Dowdy Ficklin Stadium next Saturday. They come in ranked in the top 20 with a record of five wins and one loss. And Steve, like this South Carolina series, Virginia Tech, a regional series, some great games here in recent years between the Hokies and the Pirates. 
There have been, and I'll tell you what, Jeff, of all the guys that I coach against personally, I have more respect for Frank Beamer than any of them. He's just a class guy. He has hung into that Virginia Tech program when all of the knuckleheads down there see they want to fire him and get rid of him. But I saw what he was doing. He was patient. He kept working. And he has a fine, fine football team. He's a gentleman, a class guy all the way. I love playing against Virginia Tech. It's, our kids get a little edge on for that game. And I like that football game. I got one thing to say to the Pirate fans. Sell it out. It's got to be sold out or we're not going to have a chance. And that, we have got to have every advantage because this, is, this may be the best football team we're going to play all year long. No doubt about it. Can I get a smile from you on this big victory? <laughs> My head hurts so bad I can barely smile, but I, that's about the best I can do. Our viewers ask me, try and get Steve to smile. And if you're not going to smile after a game like this, I don't know when you are. Congratulations. This program now has beaten South Carolina three of the last four years. You've beaten them now two of the last three as head coach. So congratulations on that. Well, I appreciate that. I'll tell you, I, I love coming down here to play. I really do. I'll tell you what I really, I hold a vision for our program, Jeff. We're going to have a stadium like this one of these days. I believe that. And we got to make it happen. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. Dowdy Ficklin Stadium is the place to be next Saturday. 1.30 kickoff time. Let's have an all-time record crowd as the Pirates will take on the Hokies. Thanks so much for being with us on the Steve Logan Show, and we'll see you next Saturday at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The Steve Logan Show, an inside look at East Carolina Pirate football, has been presented by Sprint Carolina Telephone. By Pepsi by Morgan Printers Incorporated, by Pizza Hut, by Wachovia, by the Hilton Inn of Greenville, by s &K Famous Brands, U.S. Air, the official airline of the East Carolina Pirates. U.S. Air begins with you.